What is up guys? Welcome on back to TK's Garage and we're in the BMW today and I just wanted to talk a little bit about a Carvana issue. Now, I got hit up by a woman by the name of Terry Burton uh, messaging me about an issue that she had with Carvana and we're going to get into it. I'm going to read the emails and stuff and get into her story because it's stories like this that are so key and so important and it's why I'm going to open this thing up for more people you know if you've had an issue if you've had a problem with carvana if you've had your car for six months and you don't have a title i literally i need to hear from you i'd like to set up a video call you know it's a, a i'll send you a link we get to talk a little bit and then you get to tell your story to the public and it's not just that you're telling it to me don't get it twisted the news will pick this up other places will pick this up and the issues that you are having with carvana will get resolved. If, I don't know if you've ever heard of the, the saying that the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Well, it's really how that goes. And the bigger voice you have, the better. And I want to use my platform to give you guys uh, an opportunity to, you know, win in that uh, regard. So with that said, let's go ahead and um, get into it um, right after the intro. All right, guys, so welcome on back to TK's Garage. Like I said at the beginning, um, I got reached out to by a person by the name of Terry Burton, and she said, you know, look, I bought this car for my son as a graduation gift. It was delivered on June 1st of 2021. <clears throat> it had one set of Texas tags, okay? So we had one set of Texas tags, three sets of of illegal Arizona tags. The car can't be driven on temporary tags anymore. Texas is cracking down on temp tags, and that is true. Texas is like, if you have a temp tag, you could get, it could be legit. It might be within your first 30 days. They're pulling people over just to see anyway. They wanna know how long you've had the car. Um, now she does have her own video on YouTube. I am linking that in the description down below. I implore you to go watch her video so she, you can hear from her own words the issues that she's had with Carvana. She says, <clears throat> and, I, and this is I love consumers that are real like this. She said, the fucking <laughs> started with the delivery of the car. The mileage was off by seven thousand miles. Um, now this is. A common thing with Carvana, they sell a car at a certain mileage and then when it gets delivered, it's off by thousands and thousands of miles. And then unless you bitch and complain, then they take money, they'll take money off the, the, the final paperwork or price of the car, you know, 2000 or whatever. But it's just, it's ridiculous that they're not accurately reporting. Let me give you an example. You're supposed to have like the as is or warranty paperwork in the windows in most states on the on the windows of your cars if it's on your lot. And Carvana gets like Carvana doesn't follow any rules and they get away with murder. And especially I just don't I just don't get it, man. You know, you think states like Texas and Florida and other ones would be actively pro consumer, but they're just letting these son of a bitches get away with whatever they want. Anyways, so the car was off by seven thousand miles. They said there was a mistake on the paperwork. I looked at so many cars. I thought I just ordered the wrong car. That's what she said. She was giving them the benefit of the doubt, right? The purchase order had 25,000 miles on the car. That's what I thought I was getting. By the way, the papers you sign make you acknowledge from time to time there may be problems getting the title because of COVID. This is a new little paper piece of paper that they put into your dealer packet when you buy a car to try to say, well, hey, you knew about it, so you can't sue over it. But that paper holds no legal weight. If you're a consumer, just so you know, that little paper that you sign means nothing. It's a memo. It doesn't mean nothing. You could tell them to do this and you're good. Um, and they said it's because of COVID. Bullshit. That's out the window. What I realized later was when the car was returned from the first buyer, because here's the thing, somebody bought it previously and then they returned it. Um, their computer system regenerated the listing with the correct miles of 32,000. 
They said they would not do a price adjustment because of the miles, because she did complain about that. My son loved the car. We got it at a good price, so we just let it slide, right? Now, just know, once you complete your purchase, the whole ad about the car goes away, supposedly, right? So you got no reference. <clears throat> After the first tags expired, we started calling. I made a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. They responded by saying they knew after the seven-day trial period there was a problem with the title. They verbally told me there was a problem with the title about two days before the first tag expired. Did I mention I recorded all of these conversations? She did. She recorded everything. There are only a few highlights from my recordings because they never have an answer. They always had to get back to you with any answers. So they kept saying... It's my DMV. Well, Texas DMV has no issues issuing tags. I know personally because I, when I bought the Jaguar, I got the title and the tag like this instantly. Um, saying they are backed up. We did not buy another car. We got the plates in 18 days. So, no, it was not my DMV. Being that she bought a second car and she got the plates in two weeks. So, that's exactly BS. When we called the Texas DMV, they said the car was registered right now in Illinois, meaning... The car was still registered in another state. Wait a minute. This is where it gets interesting. They said Volkswagen, Volkswagen, did I, am I saying it wrong? Volkswagen credit. I was, I sound like Elmer Fudd, the bo, 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 bo. Volkswagen credit would not release the title. So I found this detective agency who ran the VIN for me. This was legal because I selected the option for pending legal action. So the car has been owned by Volkswagen Credit since 2018. It was sold in 2019 by a Volkswagen dealer. Then in December of 2020, Carvana was advertising the car. I found someone who registered, registered the car in 5 of 2021. I reached out to him, but he wouldn't respond. Understandable. So there is a difference in the mileage. It had already been returned because of no title. Somebody had it for several months and put from 25,000 miles to 32,000 miles and then returned the car because they couldn't get a title for the car, right? I um now he know now she also knows this because the car has been and still is registered in Illinois since 2018. There are websites that have the sale history of the car, so I was able to compare the mileage from 12 of 1220. Bad VIN is one. VINcheck.info is another. They're both free, by the way. You should check those out. Um, they have screwed... This is her words. They have screwed us around for so long. Oh, we need to have you resend the paperwork since it's wrong. They send me the purchase order again. I resign and overnight it to them. Then I bring up the mileage again. They send me the whole order again through DocuSign, except when I signed this one in December of 2021, I opted out of arbitration. Tell everyone, and yes... If you're doing anything with uh, Carvana, always opt out of arbitration. Please check out these Facebook groups. They have a ton of Facebook groups with other issues, and I have checked it, and I have I am actively following up with several consumers so I can do several videos on this. So anyways, um, what I learned from these Facebook groups is when you re-sign the contracts, it takes three months to reprocess the paperwork, or so they say. This is just another stalling technique that they do because they don't have the title. They're never going to be able to get the title for this car because Volkswagen Credit's not going to give it up. I can tell you that right now. All right. So basically, she ends up working out an exchange, right? So we work out an exchange. My original purchase was $21,500 after tax, tag, and license. My husband nagged them enough to give us an additional $4,000 on top of that amount towards a different car. The car was delivered on 128 of 2022. It had been wrecked on the right side. So they sent it back. Like, how do you deliver a car that's crashed? I, I, I just, I don't understand this, Carvana. You guys are really fucking imbeciles. You guys are really fucking stupid. How do you deliver a car? You've already had an issue with this consumer, and then you deliver a crashed car. You can't make this up. Anyways, um, but here's the thing. I had to sign a purchase order for the whole amount. They would not show the return on paper. I only had a vague email that said, per my conversation with you this morning, here's the breakdown that we discussed. Total cost 28540 uh, 5, 
for $28,454.98. The return vehicle is $21,427.87 with a balance of $7,027.11. A check for $4,000 at the time of delivery or after a seven day money back guarantee via overnight. Thanks. Yes, they wanted a check from me for $7,027.11 and they would give her a check for um, 4000 Wow. Which, by the way, was addressed to Terry Colson Burton, Twitter. Like, um, they've been digging into her um, social media. And it was just funny, right? So, this... This is so. This, this is how she fin finishes up. This is obviously to the to fund, invest, defraud investors and cover this up. I did not give them my son's car. It's in excellent condition, and once it's gone, it's gone. I know they had. I know they already had it pre-sold. I found the ad. Watch my video. Go watch her video. Link in the description. And I'm sure they would rather get it out of Texas. I have made a complaint with the DMV, which is currently being investigated. They are running about six months behind on complaints. Really, Texas doesn't care about Carvana's crimes. I'm waiting to see what happens in Florida tomorrow. Well, we're here. It's February 1st. We'll see what happens. So, I hope I am making sense to you now that I've learned that the car was title jumped. Their cars are junk, and I don't want to give up this car. I just want the damn title. Makes sense. I'm not a nut. I'm not an outgoing person. But I really want to warn people about Carvana when it's bad. It's really bad. Some people have a great experience. I didn't. And here's the thing. Some states require tags to already be on the car for delivery, so they know up front if they have the title, they are scammers. Please keep warning people. I have everything documented. If you want to talk, my phone number is da da da, -da. So, I, I also shot her another email, and I am going to try to follow up with her and still do a video call with her so that we can talk about um, what happened. And I'm just... This is just a real life story from a real consumer who eight months in still doesn't have a title for the car and they tried to exchange the car with her and kind of fleece her out of $4,000 and deliver a crashed car. Typical Carvana scumbaggery, man. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Please, please, please click the link in the description. Go watch her video. And let me know what you guys think. Come back here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Give her some support, her some support on her channel. And send this to the media. If you're in the Houston area, send this to send this to um click to Houston. Send this to like all your local media outlets in Texas if you're in Texas. Because I think the more the media learns about these issues and and it learns about these consumers, something might actually get done. Thank you.